Hello everyone and welcome back. Last night I was again reading the FAQ for the SAF Blazer UI. Um, uh, it was a nice surprise. I saw my, my article of the DevExpress dashboard in the section the when other models would be available. And those modules that we still don't have, some of them are the scheduler, the dashboard, the charts. And it got me thinking like, at the end, a SAF Blazor application, a regular Blazor application. So if you see the, the post that they did about using dashboard for Blazor in Blazor WebAssembly, at the end, there are a lot of customer uh, SAFers, a lot of SAFers saying SAF Blazor, Jason Kosinke, that is another SAFer that uh, is really involved in the community all the time. SAF Blazor, Isa Tahiri, plus one for SAF Blazor, Norbert, plus one for SAF Blazor, SAF Blazor. So, I saw the my article here. I did the the same following this post. I did the same integration of DevExpress dashboard control for the Blazor server side. So last night I said, okay, let's get on it. Let's see what we can achieve. And and I think that especially because the next meetup will be based on UI customization. Most probably we'll do a series of custom control integration in SAF Blazor, just like the scheduler, the chart, actually something like this. Like we can use the charts from DevExpress control and then use it in our SAF Blazor. But this video, let's focus on the dashboard part. So what I did was I add another, uh, I add the SAF Blazor UI projects to my application and I follow exactly all these same steps. Nothing different, it's wrong for a second. So you see what I'm saying. So if you see, this is a component that it has a page a dashboard that we can reference in our URL. Let's wait for it to load and then we come back to it. Okay, you see it's showing inside, but the first thing was I can do something like this. And I was able to get the dashboard control in SAF, inside SAF Blazor, but it was losing my navigation. It was losing everything. So I was thinking how to get that dashboard inside, like in, in a dashboard view. So, so because I wanted to add it in a detailed view and this control is not actually linking to any business object, my first thought was, okay, let's create a view item. And I went to my Blazor project and I add a component view item and we can call this as however we want i dashboard view item or anything else so in 21.6 with my with doing this and returning this render, render fragment it was working that's it i didn't have to do anything else just and if you see here i'm just opening a div opening an iframe and passing the url and the first thing that i tested was on wikipedia but in 20.2 this is already not working so because it was not working, I wasn't sure why, I did what we always do. We went to the source code of uh, the Express, Express, Express app, Blazor.net standard, and I started looking at their implementation of a view item. And then I realized that they are grabbing that render fragment and interface called like component content holder. So I did the same thing. I created this class that it has a constructor that uh, takes a render fragment, and then we return that new component content holder. So exactly what I did here, I put the same class and then I return that component content holder that is having the render fragment inside. With that one, I just put the same URL that our dashboards are taking and, okay, I forgot one thing else. For the SAF application to be able to see this component that we're adding our SAF Blazor server right here, I follow this ticket where they are talking how to add a SAF Blazor custom form. And you can do one, again, one page that it will be like public CSS HTML and you can browse to that URL. But if it's a component like what we're seeing, we need to add in our app uh, component, this additional assembly and reference the assembly of a project. So if we go to a project and we go to the app tracer, you see, there is the additional assembly and gets from here. 
because if not, it's only taking the components that are in this assembly. So I add our own assembly here so he knows where to find that component, create the, the view item, and then I went to my model after compiling, of course, and I create a new dashboard view and I, I add that component. That's it. If you see, I can add and my component view item, it will be here. With that one, now I can run my project. Have too many tabs and links open. And I have in the navigation our dashboard blazer control. And right here we can we can of course hide these two actions with a needed and we can create a dashboard, create a new data source, select database for example, and this will take the connection string that we have in our app settings. So we have even Right now it's taking the connection string of our SAF application, but we can even have another one from a, another application, another database or anything else that we need. So it's really comprehensive. And then we can also use our query builder and we can start taking all the fields that we want. And I actually use Bogus and we can also use a store procedure, of course. I actually use Bogus to generate 3000 records of this domain object one, as you see here, and actually really responsive, really fast. And with that one, let's create a quick dashboard. And we have here uh, available the viewer and the designer. So let's create a new dashboard from our data source. Let's select the connection string from query builder. Let's select the only business object, the only table that we have. And we're gonna say we need name, address, active, finish. And that's it. Let's click create. Let's add a pie. Let's add a value. It will be name. And an argument. It will be active. And here we go. We have our first dashboard. Now we just save. And that's it. Here we have our viewer. And we have our designer. How cool is that? Uh, here we go. Hope it's useful for everybody. We're gonna put the URL of the GIF of the project in the description of the video.